Um, the second demo is we're going to um, use big data technology in the cloud. And in particular, we're going to use um, Amazon DynamoDB um, as uh, to build our spatial index and uh, store some data. And also, we're going to use Amazon Web Services, Amazon S3, as the container for uh, for, um, for for all the rest of the data. So, so uh, yeah. And um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Google Docs. Okay. So here we go. So what is DynamoDB? It's a NoSQL um, database in the cloud, hosted by Amazon. Um, and all the data is stored on SSD, so uh, it's very fast. There's no limit on how big. Um, well, I guess the, the limit is how much data Amazon can store, but uh, for all intents and purposes, there's no limit there. Um, and you pay for the performance you want. How much data you want to put in, how much data you want to put out, um, and, the, and, the, uh, and the performance bandwidth of that. I'm not going to demonstrate the auto-scaling aspect, but you can use something called dynamic DynamoDB, which will... Um, pay for, which you can have it automatically scale up and down to give you um, um, the performance you require, um, but keeps your prices down. And of course, um, as is with Amazon, um, Amazon has um, um, Hadoop integration directly with DynamoDB through their Elastic Map Reduce service as well. So, so what I'm going to do here is... Um, First, um, what I've done is I've built a geohashing strategy to store all the data in DynamoDB. Since DynamoDB itself doesn't have a, uh, a hashing strategy or a spatial index. And so you'll see, this is what, um, if you give it a, a polygon, that's how a polygon is geohashed. So it fits the biggest geohash squares that it can um, in the middle. And then the round edges, it, um, depending on how accurate you make the geohash, it generates other squares. So all those squares go into the index. And so you can see per feature, there can be many index records. But again, with DynamoDB, we're not concerned with, um, with the size of the data. So we're not uh, too worried about that. And, um, and this is what lines look like. So you can see, again, geohashing. Um, this is what, uh, last but not least, this is what images look like. So that's an image. So you can see images generally, uh, they're nice and square, so uh, they take fewer indexes. And of course, I'm not showing you a point, but a point um, takes exactly one geohash. Um, and uh, so that's very, very simple as, uh, as well. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, and I'll show you the workspace, but I won't run it, is... Um, storing vector, raster, and LIDAR data into uh, Amazon DynamoDB. Um, so for the raster and the LIDAR data, that the data sets themselves are copied to S3. The geohashes are, um, <coughs> the geohashes are calculated, and the workspace looks like this. So it's very, very simple. So load, uh, this is what the load vector one looks like. And there's a couple of custom transformers I've built. I won't go into too much detail, but uh, essentially I've built one called a DynamoDB Spatial Index that can take anything, and um, it simply takes a number. Obviously, you have to have your Amazon credentials, how accurate you want your geohash to be, and you can specify it as accurate as you want. The more accurate, the better. You can specify a, and you specify a category for the data, which is a natural way to divide the data, and then the F3 bucket name. Um, where you want uh, the S3, uh, the data stored. So if you run it on um, CAD data, you can see here, here it is here. I'm not going to go through too much detail. Um, the only thing to notice is that for raster um, and LIDAR and other objects, they're going to be stored in S3. And then um, the geohash is calculated using something from the store called the geohash approximator, which you can download. And this Dynamo DB Spatial Index Transformer will also be up there. Um, so that's what it looks like. Um, if I look at the actual DynamoDB tables, you'll see that uh, here's uh, typically what the index looks like. So you'll see I have some imagery, um, okay, and this is for the imagery one. And you can see here's the geohash and there's the identifier. And if I go over to the Dynamo test data, you'll see and explore that table, you will see here's the actual um, type of data. In many cases, I link it. If it's imagery, I link to the image. If I have small um, raster sets, like I have over here, okay, and then, um, I'm sorry, vectors data sets, then um, the data is actually embedded. So you can see here's a rodent. This is an actual rodent trail here. That's what the data looks like. 
um, this is the data um, here. Okay, if I click on it, you'll see um, there's the geohash, there's that. So if I go back over here to the data, sorry, and explore that one, you'll see that here's the actual embedded data. So I have both supports for embedded data or linked data. Okay, so in uh, so that's the both both of those there. So anyway, so now we'll go back and look at the uh, the next one. Okay, so that is where are we here? That is or here. Okay, so that's vector raster or lidar. Okay, we look at the next one, geocoded. I'm going to run this one. The next kind of thing we can store is uh, imagine we want to store all our geocoded index, our geocoded images. So um, imagery looks exactly the same as vector. Okay, so we won't look at that. But geocoded pictures, let's take a look at that one. Okay, here it is here. And again, the only difference here is what I, I do is I first decode the geocoding from the imagery. I built that in a custom transformer, which again will be on the store. Very simple. I just grab the lat long index, uh, lat long information from the geo, um, the geo, the header information on the JPEG 2000. Okay, and then I pump this into the same DynamoDB um, um, indexer. Okay, and um, I can actually. Uh, I can actually run this one, so I'll run it on one. And um, and here's what I normally do when I build workspaces: is I quite often have um, test and debug stuff below. So I'll run this. And I'll put it in test data index here. So if we look at our Amazon, my Amazon S3 here, you'll notice that um, I refresh this. This is the actual um, imagery. Okay, if it comes up. There's all the images that I loaded previously, okay, and uh, they're actually JPEG 2000s. So I'm going to go back here, and you're going to see after I run this, you're going to see there's going to be a geotagged um, guy here, geocoded picture. I'm going to run this, and it'll only take a second, okay. Be much quicker if it was uh, actually on the cloud, okay. So it had to upload that image to S3. And now if I go back here to S3 and I refresh this, you're going to see there's a geocoded image, and there's the, uh, the URL, and there's the actual um, image there. Okay. And I can look at that if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. So, Don, in most cases, the, with the data, you're not actually modifying the data itself. You're basically just tagging it when you load it. That's right, that's right. So for LiDAR imagery and those sorts of things, I'm generating the geo hash, then I'm copying it up to S3, and then I've created a spatial index for that. For vectors, what I do is for each vector, I extract it, I store it in DynamoDB, and, um, and then I, I have it's embedded in most cases, unless it's a really large feature, which then I'd create a copy in S3. Yes. Does that answer mm -hmm. the question? And somebody was asking so about... Sorry, just some quick. Somebody was asking about uh, video. Would we would we, we have a way of uh, storing that? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to binary. Absolutely, I'm going to talk about that next. I'm okay, talk cool. about that next. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah. So, if we look here, this is the uh, the data test data. You can see I have imagery here. If I go to the test data now, you're going to see that I actually have everything's linked, but I actually have one that is my uh, geocoded data right here. So you'll see there's my geocoded, and you can see there's the JPEG link, because again, I, um, I, I copied it to, uh, to S3. So now we're going to go back to my next one here. So that's geocoded images. So how about storing um, anything? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to store um, any, you can take any file, I give it a location, and then it will, uh, whoops, and then it will, um, I'm getting excited here, and then it will um, store. So that's what I'm going to do now. And so load any document or link. So I'm going to do this twice. Here's the workspace. And again, with these custom so transformers, which we don't have time to go into today, um, they, they're all very, very simple. So here's, what, basically I have, um, when I go to run this, it asks me for a location um, and the document or path, and then it can give it a c category. Um, I do have video on here, but obviously we don't want to watch me upload that. So what I'll do is I'll just go and grab, say, let's say grab this, uh, I just say copy as path. So imagine this is a video. Okay, I paste it in here. Okay, got to get rid of those uh, 
quotes. And of course, we don't need the quotes. Okay. And now I can, in this case, it's a workspace, but I could, if I type, I could do whatever I want because what it's going to do is just copy this file um, and index it at that location. So you could imagine maybe you have, uh, you know, locations throughout the city. Maybe you have recreation facilities and you have videos, pictures, or maybe you have a construction site or, or anything. You can associate, what this enables you to do is associate as many different document types as you want with any, any location. So in this case, let's call it workspace. We'll call it Don's workspace, okay? Um, but you could call it whatever you want. I'm going to run this, and um, and, that, and then what's going to happen is it's going to push that to S3, generate a geohash, and write the geohash information into DynamoDB. Okay, so now if we go back to DynamoDB, well, we should wait for that to finish. Okay, I guess it is finished. It's uh, not sure it worked. Okay. Yep. It was. It worked. Okay. So now we go back here. So now I'm going to go back to my tables. Uh, I created test ones just so that we can see it. So because my other ones have so much data in the uh, so explore that. And now if we look in here, we're going to see the imagery, imagery, imagery. Dawn workspace right there. Okay. And you'll see the workspace was copied. It says it's linked, and the workspace was copied to Amazon S3. So if I go to S3. And I go back to here, and I refresh this. Okay, there's my work workspaces, and if I drill in, there's my workspace. And again, I could download that just you know very very easily because at the end of the day, if I look at properties and uh, details, it uh, has a URL link that I could uh, easily. Oh, I gotta select it. Okay, cancel this. If I select it and say properties, you'll see that in fact there's a URL link right there that I could uh, just you know click on um, and download. Okay, I turned off security so anybody could uh, could add, add that. But yeah, so that could be that could be video. And if even if you had a video with a bounding box, if you knew all that information, you could do that because we we do know there's um, we have have worked a little bit with um, video that um, has some header information on it and as an XML sidecar file. So you could use that to index all your your videos. So also you can also index any URI. So imagine you have a Google a Google document or something. Um, you could just um, you know paste the whole path in there, and um, then you could spatially index all your Google documents as well, or your Box, you know anything on Box or Dropbox or any of these other cloud-based services. You don't want to copy them again into the Amazon S3. So what you can do is you can just put them, you know, right right in there. So if I went to say my Dropbox, okay, now we're going a little off where I was going to go and I could say, uh, you know, drill into a uh, webinar, okay, and grab a file, say, oh, here's a file. I could, uh, you know, share Dropbox link, okay, or copy. I want to Dropbox, where's Dropbox? Anyway, you got the idea. I, uh, I could basically go and grab any file and, uh, Essentially, paste it in there. So let's see. Do they got anything now? That would load the file, or would it just a link? A link to the file. You'll It'll see actually load just it. the link. So it's yep, just yeah, the link. Okay. So now it knows that hey, this is a link. So let's call this, uh, you know, presentation. Mm -hmm. Now I go like this. Okay, it's going to run. Okay, there. It's going to take a second, of course. Okay. Now I go over here. I go over to my S3, first of all. Let's go back to here. Um, it's loading it. Okay. Let's get rid of that. Get rid of this. Okay. Now let's, uh, let's do this. Okay. Oh, what did I call it? You remember? Presentations, I think. Yeah, it was presentations. Oh, well, I did something wrong. So Don, you could use that to I could use that to store my uh, music collection in the cloud, or if I wanted to. Yeah, that's right. So what do we do here? So let's just let's just HTTP, and I'll figure what what I did wrong there. www.safe.com presentation. Okay, so fine. Let's try that again. So yeah, 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 yeah. So There's yeah, you could do absolutely uh, anything, and I'll check that other one, see how I messed it up later. But uh, that's what happens when you off the road sometimes. So now let's go here. And uh, maybe it just takes a while to sync up. 
Oh, I know. No, 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 no. What am I doing? I shouldn't be looking at S3. Of course, I didn't copy it to S3. Sorry, that's not. The thing's working perfectly. It's me. I got to go to the. Um, I got to go to the test data index, right? Because of course we didn't come actually or test data because we didn't actually copy it. That was the whole point. But if it's we look here, we can see right. there's there's the HTTP one, um, and it's under uh, there. And the other one was going to be anyway. Here it is here. Dropbox, so yeah. Here. Yep, there you go. There's the Dropbox one. And again, it's spatially indexed, so we know where it is. But rather than copy it down, we just use the um, existing document. And then, of course, as that document's updated, it's uh, it's all done. So uh, yeah, so there you go. So you know, we've so with this technique, we can store anything. We can store uh, um, vector raster lidar, in which we copy it up. We can score geocoded images. Again, copying the image test three. We can copy any document, video, music, word, you name it, any document at all, we're just copying it up. So we're actually not even having to know what's inside that package. It could be a zip file, it could be anything, associating it with an index, and last but not least, any internet resource. And of course, nothing's good if you can't actually um, get that data out. So we'll do that quickly. Okay, here. Okay, so you know, I have a workspace here. And go here, and of course you got to read it. And again, this is a very, very simple workspace. I what I did is I wrote a DB Dynamo DB querier, which again we will make um, um, available to people. And um, I run this guy, and um, while he's running, he takes a couple seconds. I'm about 35, I think. We'll go through the uh, the, um, the rest of the slide, and we'll come back, and I'll show you how that works. Is that the query one? Yep. Yeah. And um, so what I did is I ran it. It took 45 seconds. You can see FME took 2.7 seconds. And most of it is um, slinging data back and forth between DynamoDB and my my system. Because my DynamoDB spatial query actually hits the DynamoDB database twice. And so there's a number of uh, records flying around. But anyway, we'll scroll up and you'll see what comes back. I'll click on one. And I grab the imagery. So we didn't show loading the imagery. but um, and for this particular query image, if I click on it, you can see um, because the image user is loaded in DES3, the query gives us back the link to the image. So again, I can click on that, or I could directly look at that with um, FME or anything else. So I'll just say uh, open with FME. No, nope, not Workbench, Data Inspector. I'll just pick one. And you'll see um, the image is identified as JPEG 2000, of course, because it had the extension. FME can directly read from HTTP. And um, so here it comes. And um, it's coming. There it is. And if I zoom out, you'll even see that it actually lines up with uh, the things on the ground. So you can see the streets in that area. And, uh, and uh, there you go. So, so it all fits. And so that image was loaded into... Uh, into uh, Amazon um, DynamoDB and uh, S3, and it's completely accessible to anybody um, wherever they wherever they are. So 